Hello and welcome to this Manufacturing Systems Technology Part 2 course, uh, today being Module 1. Just a brief uh, reca recap of, uh, you know, uh, sort of what we did in the Part 1. We tried to learn about uh, computer integrated manufacturing systems really, starting with the CAD design part, then going into the different aspects of how you do process planning. And then finally, also uh, trying to write a code uh, using numerical control on machines and then finally studying a little bit about inventory management, keeping the lean manufacturing concepts into mind. Uh, this particular module would be dedicated more on issues like quality associated with the manufacturing process. Um, it will also be uh, looking into various aspects of material handling systems like uh, let us say automatic storage retrieval systems or automatic guided vehicles, AGVs, uh, which are the most uh, important concepts of production management in the current uh, technology regime uh, which exists in the industries. Uh, we will also look in details uh, to some of the issues related to robotics and robot programming uh, in this particular module. So, let us talk about quality. Uh, quality really is uh, <coughs> the, the key uh, parameter that is determinant of uh, whether uh, uh, an enterprise can be in business. Okay. Uh, gone are those days, uh, probably the late 80s when we used to talk about minimum cost, you know, and uh, also to some extent about uh, the lead time in which uh, production processes would be able to converge and realize a product to the customer. Uh, the major issues uh, which are nowadays uh, very important to stay in business is how repeatable the uh, performance metrics of a product is once it goes to the customer or the market. And uh, the, uh, the whole essence is about changing the quality management philosophy of an organization and the changing the focus of management of an organization geared to the quality aspect. So, that there is no value, you know, no, no non-value added uh, work which comes out of any, uh, you know, process. So, push back as far as possible the metrics which determine the quality into the process. So, that at the stage of the process output, you really need not worry about uh, the quality level. Okay. So, this is all called in process quality build up and uh, all the organizations nowadays are more or less intending to do that. So, let us understand how quality can be done at the product level or the process level normally by designing the process of the product and introducing a lot of robustness in that design stage. So, that the non confirmability or the you know not meeting of the performance metrics is out of the question okay, of uh, given a product design or given a process design which has been laid out. So, that is the essence at which we will be looking at uh, of this quality engineering aspect. And let us look at some of the basic principles uh, which are important for understanding quality. So, obviously, the best approach as I think I had illustrated of product quality is to build quality into the product and process right at the product and process design stage. Okay. It is called robustness by design. And uh, also, uh, you know, it may be improved at the production stage by confirming to the process design and trying to see whether whatever you have laid out, you know, as your uh, process follows the norms for the process at every stage, the norms that have been uh, formulated at the design stage of the process. So, for this purpose, the techniques uh, such as SPC or SQC, which is also known as statistical process control or quality control is used. And uh, the idea is that you have to somehow be able to reduce the number of non-confirming products and uh, non-confirming parts which come out of a uh, production process. Okay. So, the reducing the number of non-confirming products. Uh, and thereby improving the quality is basically the goal. So, one aspect obviously is the design stage and one aspect obviously as the production is going on, what do you do to arrest uh, the production problems at a much earlier level before it really uh, gets into a menace. So, that is all about quality engineering and uh, if I really looked at quality, it is really you know a relative term. Some person may perceive something as high quality, some person may perceive something else as high quality. So, you have to have some kind of a customer mapping of the customer needs and the aspirations that the customer has behind a product exactly into the product. Okay. So, obviously, we did a lot of this analysis before when we talked about how uh, variability can be introduced at the production process stage given the change of perception, how quickly a process can be 
uh, altered to produce uh, something which changes or maps that perception on a real time basis. So, all this we did in part 1 uh, manufacturing systems technology. So, here it is really you know uh, dependent on the eyes of the beholder I would say who is the customer uh, who would actually try to treat quality in some particular manner. So, from a functional point of view of course, the product is considered to be good quality if it meets the desired functional requirements adequately over the intended period of its use. Okay. And so, the definition of the you know uh, quality as per the American Society of Quality Control includes all these concepts which have been illustrated here and says that quality is the totality of features and characteristics of a product or service that bear on its ability to satisfy a given need and need means a customer need basically. So, how well you are confirming to the, the characteristics as mapped from the customer need is what the quality means philosophically. So, if I look at some of the dimensions which are associated with the uh, let us say quality of the product, there are principally about 12 dimensions related to the product into which you can categorize the quality of a product. Uh, the first being the performance of course, is the primary operating characteristics we are talking about let us say the engine meeting a certain brake horsepower uh, output. So, uh, you know the primary operating characteristics of the engine then would be how much BHP the engine is designed for. Okay. Or uh, let us say for example, if I wanted the flow rate coming out of a uh, you know uh, let us say a, a mechanical pump, uh, then the flow rate would be the primary operating characteristic for which primarily the product is intended, uh, the design of the product is intended. So, that is the performance, the primary operating characteristic. The other aspects are features, for example, there may be many secondary operating characteristics apart from the primary operating characteristics. For example, you know in an engine if we look at let us say the, the secondary operating characteristics, there may be many issues like for example, whether the uh, engine meets the emission norms. Okay. So, that can be one of the secondary operating characteristics. Given the primary operating characteristic of the engine RPM or BHP which is very, very critical, Okay, can the next need could be that okay, is, is it going to meet some kind of a uh, quality layout for meeting the emission norms. Okay, so, that can be a secondary operating characteristic in this uh, particular case. Okay. So, then you have of course, time, uh, time waiting in line, time from concept to production of a new product, time to complete a service, these are all uh, a very important part that how, how much lead time you are having in the process which includes probably the design concept all the way to the production uh, stage of a product or you know let us say when you are talking about a service industry time to complete a given service. Uh, like for example, when you talk about uh, a restaurant and you, you, you want uh, to see how you know the uh, food from the ordering point to the, uh, uh, to the point when it is delivered is uh, taken across you know. So, all that time would be considered as very critical because a customer may have to wait more or less depending on if the food arrives faster or later. Okay. And so, that is a very important aspect of quality. So, performance features time and the next is reliability, the extent of failure free operation. For example, let us say when you are talking about the Indian driving cycle, we might as well see that if let us say there is a quality parameter on an oil seal and an engine and uh, you want to uh, simulate the engine to run on conditions. Uh, like the Indian driving cycle and see that how many uh, revolutions of the crankshaft can this oil seal bear without leaking. Okay. So, that is the reliability of the oil seal. So, something which is more related to the, uh, the extent of time up to which the, the product would operate without any failures that is a very important part of the quality. Durability again a very important part amount of use until replacement is preferred to repair. Uh, we all talk about product warranty and product guarantee you know in some of the cases where there is this issue of durability which is, is talked about. So, uh, can you up to what amount of time you can use the product right until the product really becomes so non confirming that you will have to rather replace it rather than doing some changes and trying to use it. Okay. So, that is the durability. Obviously, uniformity is an important quality dimension. So, low variations among repeated outcomes of a process we are talking about let us say production of a circular shaft, a cylindrical shaft by turning process and there the uh, you know the, the uniformity could be concerned with what is the 
variability in the output dimension that is the diameter of a particular shaft. Okay. If you are producing 20,000 such shafts in maybe a day's time on a high speed NC controlled uh, lathe machine, then the question of uniformity would come as to if you look at all the outputs, is it all coming out to be within the dimension plus minus the tolerance which has been provided in the design itself or is going out, you know, or the process is going on a run out. So, that is the uniformity that is a very important aspect or dimensions of the quality. Consistency, okay. So, consistency basically talks about match with documentation, advertising, deadlines or industry standards. So, whatever has been planned for the process be it the production process or the marketing process or even the design, the first principle of quality says the document everything that has been planned. In fact, all the different related you know uh, certification agencies are basically nothing but overall guidelines of how to document certain processes or certain products or certain you know systems within an organization. So, this documentation once done has to be matched at every level consistently that is called consistency of a organization that if you have documented a process to do or carry out in x or y way are you uh, sticking to that process or sticking to that documentation. Uh, as far as the regular running of the process is concerned year long is something which is related to the consistency. Okay. So, this can go true for even things like you know the deadlines to an organization, how the deadlines are being met, how you are advertising uh, for the particular product that the organization produces or are there any industry standards which are there and you are complying to them. So, these are all part of consistency. Service viability. So, obviously, uh, there may be product failures in the market or no product non-compliance or non-compliance of the performance metrics in the market because of which frequent servicing may be required of the product. You know, particularly for dynamic products, it is very important that once sold, uh, you have to have a sort of annual maintenance of these products to set it right every time and set it and ensure that it keeps running. For example, if you buy an automotive, there is obviously a service plan given with the automotive that you will have to come after so many kilometers or so many uh, number of days you know <coughs> back for service and there may be some free services given by the organization just to ensure this habit of quality checking to the customer and uh, ensuring that the customer returns once in a while uh, so that the overall vehicle health can be monitored at that particular level. Okay. So, the serviceability of the product is a very very important dimension of quality and this has to be planned at the design of the product stage. You are designing a product which is unserviceable. let us say for example, after the full assembly you are not able to open a part from a system, it is a major problem. So, the other issue is the aesthetics <coughs> of a product, obviously as the name implies it means how beautiful uh, is the product you know in its make or construction. So, it is basically all characteristic related to qualitatively to the senses of the customer and it is basically a mapping of how he perceives a product to be uh, you know a good looking product you know. So, that is what the aesthetics uh, means it is a very important trait of quality again incorporated in the design stage for a product you know so that there is good amount of uh, perception about the product in the customer's mind. So, obviously, there is a personal interface which uh, talks about characteristics such as punctuality, courtesy and professionalism for any particular organization. This is a very important uh, aspect that you know related to let us say a process for an organization or related to for the systems for the organization are the essential elements of that organization the, uh, the human factor is it really disciplined and punctual, uh, this would be very important for determining whether the overall quality level would be afflicted of the particular product okay? or maybe make systems in a manner so that become people become regular and punctual. You know, then you have things like how professional a person is about its own work. For example, does he hide anything which goes bad in the production that he has made or the, the sequence of operation that he has added on to a certain system or a product. Okay. So, this is also a very important the trait, the personality trait of a person who is involved in the production, production level is inherently related to the quality. So, this is a personal interface of the, uh, the human force which is associated with production or even the design you know uh, is very important dimension of the quality again you know. So, for example, in, in systems in places where uh, you can ensure that they, the workforce by and large is disciplined and the workforce by and large is honest about what they are doing, you will always uh, be able to get a good level of quality. Harmlessness. So, obviously, this is the characteristics related to safety, health and environment. Any process for example, uh, which is the production process will have an issue related to overall safety 
okay, whether this particular product when the production process is going on is safe to be produced. There may be products where uh, toxic fumes or harmful you know vapors may be generated uh, which may not be that uh, consumer friendly or uh, which may not be that friendly to the personnel who are making the product at that particular stage. So, you will have to make separate guidelines for sort of environment protection there so that the human safety aspect of the people who are involved directly in the production can be taken up and so this has to be again a important part of process planning and so that would in a way influence the quality of the products. So, for example, in automotive paint shops, uh, if you have a certain level of let us say <coughs> you know uh, environmental cleanliness, it is very important for the quality of the particular product. If there is a certain amount of dust level, let us say for example, if you are talking about a paint shop with class 1000 or class 10,000 uh, you know uh, cleanliness levels where we are talking uh, about how many dust particles per uh, millimeter cube or ml of uh, air uh, is available uh, in the particular system. This is a very important concept of quality because it is related to the environment in which the product is being produced. Okay. So, the harmlessness and also issues related to the environment are very critical for the product quality. Obviously, perceived quality again is a very important uh, factor which is actually an indirect measures or in inferences about one or more of the dimensions uh, and then overall reputation etcetera of the business. So, if I am well known to produce a high quality product, so the perceived quality just by looking at that particular brand of the product will be that yes it is good you know. So, that also in a way is a dimension to the quality which needs to be promoted at the design stage itself. So, these are the various I would say 1 to 12 uh, dimensions of quality which are important for ensuring that there is a quality system in place within an organization for the process or even for the product design. So, <coughs> we will uh, stop this module here in the interest of time and in the next module we will look at some of these uh, the, uh, the costs which can be associated at various stages which can be a sort of penalty cost to any non-compliance to the quality standards which have been laid out in the process uh, design itself or even in the uh, product design itself. So, if we have this cost approach then everywhere you are doing some kind of a non-conformance there would be a penalty a cost penalty. So, this the, the, the idea is that the conformance level would be high in that particular case. So, this is the concept with which we will move ahead in the next module. Thank you.